Hi everybody, my name is Jana Robbins and I'm the founder of Jumpstart Magazine. Jumpstart Magazine is Hong Kong's only print publication dedicated to startups and small businesses in Hong Kong. Um, we launched a year and a half ago and now you can find a copy in over 350 venues in Hong Kong. You can find us in co-working places, all the chambers of commerce, offices like Google, Compass, Regis, Bridges, airport lounges, private clubs, basically anywhere where there's startups, entrepreneurs, and, um, aspiring entrepreneurs, and also marketing agencies and VC firms. This is something that I think about quite a lot because this is something that is frustrating, I believe, on both sides. This is frustrating for people who are submitting press releases and hoping to get some media coverage. And it's also very frustrating for media, which uh, on the other side doesn't understand. Um, so just to give you a couple of examples, if you want to reach the media, here's what not to do. Um, first thing is really simple. Make sure that whatever you're sending is going to the right publication. I can't tell you how many things I get every single day in my mail that have nothing to do with Jumpstart Magazine. So this wastes time for you, it wastes time for us. Um, second um, thing is don't, don't be boring and generic. There's so many emails that I get that are just long and boring and um, this is not something that um, media would want to respond to. We, we want to be entertained, we want to know who, what, where, when in the first paragraph. So, so try to put a little thought into it and make it a little creative. Um, I think the worst offender in terms of reaching the, the media um, are emails that are all about me, 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 me. And at least once a week I get an email of, of that kind. Um, that's the kind of emails that ask, I want your time, I want media coverage. Um, just to give you one example, a couple of weeks ago um, the startup wrote in saying we've been covered by this publication, that publication, this publication, we, we think you should cover us too. And indeed they had an interesting product. But that kind of asking for it, um, and it also was poorly grammatically worded and all those things, would kind of made me put that email into the trash pile. Um, so here's things to do. Um, so put a little human element into it. Just try to find out the editor's first name. It only takes a moment to find out who they are. Um, the other thing is give something. And you might think, what can I give? Offer some nice feedback on the magazine. Um, Give them some feedback on a recent article that you've read. I love the emails that I receive about people excited about Jumpstart, and that's the kind of emails I pay attention to. I want to work with those kinds of nice people. Um, the other thing is email is saturated. Everyone is emailing the media. Try maybe something else. Try sending snail mail. Um, that would get my attention, and that would get attention of other media as well. So I'm sorry to disappoint you here, but there's really not a magic formula that's going to fit all types of businesses. Uh, for example, some businesses are extremely successful in getting new customers via AdWords and they spend, I've seen them spend millions of dollars and that's what's effective in driving new customers for them. For other businesses, they can get lots of traffic through AdWords, but it's not going to convert. So there's really no magic formula for, um, for getting new and inexpensive customers. Um, otherwise, marketing professionals would be out of business. However, I could tell you some principles that could be used to, um, to help steer you in the right direction. So the first one is something that you hear about very often, but a lot of startups don't follow through on this. And this is be where your customers are. Um, so this is kind of cliche, but like I said, in working with a lot of startups over the last many years, um, startups really don't take the time to figure out where their customers are. So to illustrate this example, um, a number of years ago I went to a trade show um, and I personally love going to trade shows. I think it's very inspiring and interesting and great networking opportunity, especially if you go to um, trade shows that have nothing to do with what you're doing. So again, I was at this trade show and I saw um, a, a photo studio set up in a trade show that had nothing to do with the rest of the trade show. And what they were doing is they realized that people that come to trade shows already look very nice, they have makeup on, and they might want to have their photo taken. Um, so very, very clever. And indeed, they had a very long line of people waiting to take their photo and immediately upload it to social media. So again, they were looking for a place where their customers could be. They were very clever and genius in coming up with this idea. Um, another principle to consider in thinking about where to get free or inexpensive customers 
is um, not being afraid to do something shocking. So a number of years ago, I worked for a lingerie company that was really nothing special. They sold lingerie from other brands, something that a lot of companies do. In fact, there's tons of competitors in their space just in New York alone. But they did something unique. What they did is they came up with National Underwear Day. That's one day a year where they rented space in Times Square and they had models parading in underwear. And that got them so much PR. Every single publication once a year would link to them and talk about this event because it was a little bit shocking. Um, and this was an incredible idea and it really worked. And if you Google uh, different phrases, they're top of Google because they came up with a strategy. Um, so again, don't be afraid of doing something shocking. Um, and then the third strategy is don't compete with, um, with others head on. And this is something that is a, a huge problem in Hong Kong where people emulate other businesses uh, because they see them as being successful. For example, in Hong Kong, there's like five different startups that are like a taxi car service and all of them are competing for the same customers. Um, what they should be thinking about is how to differentiate their business and not compete at all. For example, if they load up their cars with car seats for parents, suddenly they can appeal to a whole new group of customers and they won't be competing. And it's the same kind of thing you could find in every single industry. Co-working spaces. All the co-working spaces are competing for the same thing. All they have to do is just differentiate themselves in some sort of a way. And this is something that I talk to a lot of startups about. Don't compete head on. So again, how do you get cheap customers and expensive customers? Don't compete head on. Don't be afraid to do something shocking. And um, be where your customers are. Thank you.